Tony Sieber called it years ago. He said a new chemistry would come along that would make batteries so cheap and so abundant that lithium would one day look expensive and outdated. Of course, I think a lot of people did believe that. I was one of those people as well years ago. And here's the thing. Most people still don't realise just how quickly this is unfolding in real time. Sodium ion batteries, once seen as a bit of a science fair uh, project, are now moving into mass production. CATL confirmed that its new sodium cells branded Nextra start rolling off of the lines in December this year in 2025. That's not just for grid storage. These are going into electric cars, buses, home storage, things like that. Hello folks, Ben Alexander here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to all the new subscribers. You are very welcome to subscribe if you enjoy my videos. Let's unpack what is happening because this is exactly what uh, Tony Sieber was talking about when he said technology disruption isn't gradual, it's exponential. So only a year ago, sodium cells were stuck around 130, 140, 145 watt hour per kilogram of energy density. That was too low for mainstream EVs and it kind of undermined or the rest of the effort that was put into making EVs compelling. So now they're actually hitting 175 watt hour per kilogram, which is actually the same as BYD's uh, Blade LFP battery pack. And CATL says the next generation will hit 190 to 200 watt hour per kilogram within 12 months from now. So that that is uh, you know that kind of leap is what disruption looks like. That's shaking things up a little bit. Or I think as some people might say, it's a game changer. I shouldn't say that. It's uh, It just sounds cringy. It's not just about range. These batteries bring massive, massive advantages. Some of them will surprise you. They handle freezing temperatures far better than lithium. You can pretty much just charge them at normal speeds. They charge at, uh, they can charge and discharge almost normally at minus 20 degrees Celsius, and they still hold around 90% of their charge, even in uh, deep cold. Lithium cells can lose up to 40%, actually. So if you live in Canada, where it's, uh, obviously, I've lived in Norway for many years, and I'm used to the cold, but Canada is kind of next level cold. It kind of makes Norway look like the Mediterranean or something. So, Or if you live in the Alps or something like that, sodium could really make winter range anxiety pretty much disappear. It's, there's, there's a little bit of something left. It's only 10%, but basically that issue is no longer there and you can charge up at a public charger and charge properly, which is great. They're also safer. Even LFP chemistry batteries, which is already known for its stability, can't match sodium when it comes to uh, resisting thermal runaway. And sodium doesn't need uh, either you know, nickel or cobalt or lithium, the metals that cause most of the cost and supply chain issues. So let's talk about the cost, because that's a, a good one to start with. Uh, this is where the real disruption sits, isn't it? CATL has said its new sodium batteries will fall to around $19 per kilowatt hour at cell level. So for context, current LFP cells sit at around 55 to $60 uh, per kilowatt hour, which is roughly, uh, it says, yeah, roughly two thirds cheaper. Even at the pack level, once you add uh, casings, cooling and a BMS and that sort of thing, sodium still works out around 50% cheaper overall. That is staggering, but it means that company, uh, car companies can build the same car for thousands and thousands of dollars less or give you more range for roughly the same money and so therefore they will get your custom. So it means energy storage projects can double their capacity for the same cost and remember sodium is everywhere, it's basically salt effectively isn't it? So. You don't need to mine it in politically fragile regions or, you know, ship it around in, in so if, from the other side of the world, you know, or refine it with high emissions. That makes it one of the most scalable chemistries that we've seen to date. And there are some fantastic chemistries that we don't report on. Most of them I don't report on, but they're fascinating. Some of them are great, like, for example, the one that NASA use uh, up in space. So some people are still claiming sodium won't replace lithium in EVs. That will just be that it will just be complementary. That is absolute nonsense. When a battery is cheaper and when it's safer, longer lasting, has more, you can do more cycles and that sort of thing, and has comparable energy density, it doesn't complement it. It replaces it. 
the, you know, and I just think that's nonsense to say that. So right now, the world has massive overcapacity in lithium-based battery production, up to somewhere around 40% unused in some factories. Korea's plants are all only half utilized. So the US is, is pretty similar. If a cheaper chemistry hits the market, then those older NCM lines will be the first casualties, I think. And m make no mistake, this shift will move really, really fast. We're expecting this to be quicker than the LFP transition that happened in, say, 2019, when it was maybe 10% of EVs had LFP, and then now it's sort of like 65%, something like that, in a few years. But within two years, it was half, wasn't it? So CATL isn't alone anymore. Dozens of Chinese companies are now prototyping sodium cells with similar benefits, basically. There's a company called Hina Battery to Pharisis Energy. We're seeing pilot projects already running in China and also in Europe, the US and Australia. Not in five years, but literally now. In fact, grid-scale sodium uh, storage uh, is already basically deployed in several megawatt systems in China and in trial runs in Australia. What makes this story so fascinating is how little money has actually gone into sodium development so far, and yet it has caught up to lithium in literally just a couple of years, in record time. So if the same investment that's gone into solid state or NCM chemistries were redirected into sodium, I can only I can just imagine that we would be at 220, 240, 250 watt hour per kilogram already. And that's exactly the kind of exponential curve Tony Sieber described a decade ago. He predicted battery costs would fall below $10 per kilowatt hour. That was a prediction, a point where clean energy simply uh, competes fossil fuels on cost alone. When you see CATL quoting $19 per kilowatt hour, you realise that we're right on the edge of that curve. The professor from Tsingua University uh, recently said sodium batteries should be uh, or should differentiate rather than replace lithium. But markets don't listen to professors, they actually follow price, as this is this has already been mentioned recently. If you're a car maker and someone offers you a battery that's basically 20% lighter uh, on the wallet, that is, and performs better in winter and it's considerably safer, does many more cycles, you'll take that deal instantly. You won't really consider why Why should you get an LFP chemistry uh, cell over that, especially when EV margins are razor thin and some companies in China are really struggling to even turn a profit. CATL reportedly told partners its sodium packs could serve up to 40% of EVs in China within the next uh, two or three years. That's not niche. That is basically a tidal shift in China that's going to happen. So think about the chain reaction. Cheaper sales in China basically mean cheaper electric vehicles. These will obviously, they're coming abroad. They will be exported in, you know, in big numbers and produced most likely in Europe as well. That means high demand uh, that also means that even more production scale which drives price down even further. This is exactly the feedback loop Sieber outlined in his disruption theory a decade ago. So technology costs collapse, uh, demand skyrockets, and incumbents who think that it will take decades are suddenly out of business in like four or five years, that sort of thing. If you remember when LFP started gaining ground, people dismissed it as low-range budget tech. But in 2024, it had well over half the global EV market. Sodium is now on track to uh, follow the same curve, but just faster. I'm not sure how much faster, but definitely faster. And we're still early. This is quite early days, really. Mass production hasn't even ramped up yet. CATL's first commercial shipment start in the first quarter of next year, and more brands will follow. Once Chinese automakers start installing these packs in small city EVs and energy storage systems, then that cost advantage will ripple through the entire market practically within five years from now. It will look very, very different. Tony Sieber said the disruption would uh, come from chemistry we'd barely heard of. He was right. The sodium revolution has begun, and it's going to reshape everything very, very quickly. And uh, from EV pricing to grid storage, storage and how much we can have on our houses and how much it would cost to purchase a battery for our house in just literally a few years. It's, 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 it's a massive thing to talk about. What do you think about this? I know there's a lot to talk about here, but will lithium still have a place once sodium scales or is this uh, the real turning point? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much 
uh, to all of the members who are on screen now. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And please do consider becoming a, a subscriber to the channel. That really helps me grow the channel, which is really lovely. The channel's been growing very, very quickly. It's doubled in size in a few months. So thank you very much.